What's happening everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is Van City Audi. My name is Adam. We're back at Rider Performance with the B8S4 for another upgrade. This time not for power, but for cooling. I have the Pierberg coolant pump. This is from Merck Racing. And we're gonna see if this makes a lick of a difference in cooling down the car. This is the CWA 100 cooling pump. I've seen mixed results. I've seen mixed opinions on how well this works and how effective it is at cooling the car. I think the main thing we're gonna see is recovery from one run to the next. It's gonna be able to produce that much more pressure in the system and will create more of a flow and hopefully cool down the car better. So we're here to install this today. I'm also going to be going out on the back roads of Mexico and performing some logs for you guys. I'm actually gonna see on the logs whether the intake air temps are any cooler or not and we're going to try to get the exact same ambient temps for you guys i'll do my best obviously it has to be shot on a different day it's already night here so i've already done some logs yesterday and then we're going to do the install and i hope to do the other logs tomorrow seeing as it's calling for roughly the same temperature i'll put it all together for you guys and you'll be able to see the before and the after effects of this pierberg cwa 100 coolant pump from Merck Racing. Time to do my quarter mile testing previous to the install. What I'm gonna do is two back-to-back -back quarter mile runs, one way, turn around, the other way. I'm gonna data log the entire thing with my power link cable from Integrated Engineering, and then I'm going to go through the logs with you guys. Then, once we've installed the actual pump and we've done the modifications to the car, we're gonna go out and do another set of logs in the exact same location, exact same tank, gas. I'm going to try to make sure the ambient temps are almost identical so we have as close to perfect a comparison as we possibly can of before and after the install. Just a heads up, I'm not going to utilize launch control on any of these. I'm just trying to accomplish two back-to-back -back quarter mile runs. Start the log and here we go. <laughs> oh, it feels awesome. Big hauls ass, dual pulley E40, hell yeah. I've immediately turned around, back facing the other direction, start the log, second run. <laughs> there it is, two back to back quarter mile runs, Time to review the logs. Here's the log of the intake air temps for that first run using the OEM pump. We start at 42.75 degrees as our baseline, and as we climb through the revs all the way to the top of fourth, we end up hitting 81.75 degrees for an increase of 39 degrees Celsius throughout the entire quarter mile. To start off the second run, we see 50.25 degrees as our starting temperature, which is an increase of 7.5 degrees hotter than the beginning of the first quarter mile run. At the top of fourth, I'm seeing 86.25 degrees, which is an increase of 36 degrees. Time to get to the install. The pump is located back here. On these B8 models, we're actually going to have a secondary heat exchanger that's going to be down here. We're actually going to be removing that and taking it out of the system, seeing as the B8s do not utilize that second heat exchanger. And we're going to be solely be relying on this S6 Merc Racing heat exchanger that I'm already using. So the first thing Kyle's done is he's pulled back the fender liner and there is the pump right there. And here is the additional cooler that I spoke about. We are going to hopefully be able to remove this tonight. He just let me know he's not sure that he has the stuff to be able to delete it, so we're gonna take a look at that. But this itself is the coolant pump, which we have the, obviously that direct replacement for, and that is what we're gonna be replacing for sure. So after a quick discussion with Kyle and a once over on the car and how this coolant pump is set up and the tubing and all that jazz, what we're going to do for tonight is all we're going to do is install that upgraded pump from Merck Racing. Then I'm gonna get out and do data logs just from the one part being exchanged so we know exactly how well or 
if it isn't working at all. <laughs> We're not sure if my OEM pump was working as it was intended. It might be a weak pump because the tests that we just tried to perform on it didn't work too well. So. We're gonna get out there and we'll do some data logs and I'll be able to do a direct comparison before and after the pump install. Then at a later date, we'll replace all of the tubing with three quarter inch tubing and we'll remove that secondary heat exchanger like I spoke about in the opening. So he's got the pump installed, everything's connected, super short and sweet. But what I wanted to show you guys is this actual test that we're doing. So we have all of the different parameters being logged we're going to start the actual test. So what it does is it slowly ramps it in. It starts it at 10%, then it jumps it up to 30%, then I think it's 65% and 80%. And you can actually physically hear the pump as it starts increasing in speed. You can hear the actual coolant circulating as well as the pump running. When we did this with the OEM one, you couldn't hear it at all. So that leads us to believe that this works well so far. You can actually feel it. I don't know if you can hear that if I'm really quiet. Or this is just working extremely well. So what are we at right now? We're at 64%, ramped up to 88. I have no idea if you guys can hear that. But you can actually hear the pump running and the coolant circulating, and you can also feel the pump moving as well. You could not feel that with the OEM unit. Install's done, entire system's been bled, seems to be good to go. Now I'm gonna get out there and do an after log. So obviously not tonight, it's a late night here at Rider Performance. Next day that I'm available to do the log, I will get out there, make sure the ambient temp is roughly the same, do back-to-back -back pulls like I did previous to the install and see if this pump makes a difference. Three days have now passed since we installed that coolant pump. I haven't been able to get out and test. First day was much cooler ambient temp, so obviously I didn't want to give the advantage to the aftermarket pump compared to the OEM. Next day, my schedule was completely stacked. Today, I'm back out. The ambient temperature is half a degree hotter now than it was previously. Giving the advantage to the OEM pump, the DA is a hundred higher today. So we're going to see what this can do now Back-to-back -back quarter runs, exact same location as before. Exact same process as before. Cars in the same setting, same tank of gas. Quarter mile down, quarter mile back, then review the logs. <laughs> there we go, there's one way. All right, now the trip back. and see what those intake air temps are. Here's the log of that first run with the upgraded coolant pump. We start out at 42.75 degrees, which is exactly the same temperature we started out with with the OEM pump. This time though, we're only seeing a peak of 75 degrees at the top of fourth. That is 6.75 degrees cooler than the OEM pump was able to manage. This temperature increase was only 32.25 degrees from start to finish, which was significantly lower than the OEM pump on the first run. And for the final log, here's the second run utilizing that upgraded cooling pump. We start out at 48.75 degrees, which was a degree and a half cooler than what we saw on the second run utilizing the OEM pump. At the top of fourth, we see 78.75 degrees, which is 7.5 degrees cooler than what we saw at the top of fourth with the OEM pump. The temperature increase from start to finish on this run was only 30 degrees, which is the lowest temperature increase we saw of all four runs. Well, those are some pretty damn convincing numbers. 6.75 degrees cooler on the first run, seven and a half degrees cooler on the second run, really utilizing that recovery that everyone talks about on the internet that this coolant pump provides. 
Very, very cool and very, very neat to see. I love being able to show you guys my data logs, especially when it's pertaining to a part that we use, so we can justify and actually prove that it works and not just claim that it works like so many people do out there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The Pierberg CWA 100 Gen 3. I'm not sure if I mentioned that earlier in the video. This is a three, not a two or a one. I don't know when Merc Racing changed over to the three, but that's what they offer now. So the most updated version, that's what this pump is. And it worked like a hot damn. So kudos to Merc Racing again. Another coolant upgrade on my B8S4 that works awesome and I'm super excited to see what this is able to provide me in terms of cooling moving forward as we still continue to modify the car slightly not to take it out of its daily drivability but just to also enhance the cooling so when we do take it to the racetrack we see the utmost performance that we can get out of it maintaining those intake air temps and keeping them as low as possible thank you all so much for watching and until next time take care